watch. All right, guys, sorry about that. Um, there was a severe su thunderstorm warning, so it shut our cameras down. So hopefully um, we didn't lose too much time, because I'm hoping a few of them thunder strikes stayed in the video. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, it's been, a, it's, been, a, it's, been, a, it's, been it's been one of the greatest classes ever. You know, we didn't even want to come out here because of the wind and the rain. Uh, we get out here and guarantee Yahweh and the angels are with us. Yeah. In fact, let me get that, um, 16, 6 and 17. <laughs> This is 2 Kings 6 and 17, and it reads, And Elisha prayed and said, Yahweh, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And Yahweh opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw it. Behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. We don't see them, but I can guarantee you I hear them. <laughs> we know they're there. They're roaring right now. Uh. Uh, uh, yeah. That that the biblically speaking, moral evil is that which is opposed to Yahweh. That which is, I'm sorry, uh, opposite of Yahweh. That which is contrary to Yahweh. And again, like we keep bringing out. This whole system is anti-Hamashiach, right? And if it's anti-Hamashiach, then it's obviously anti-Yahweh, okay? Our Father and I are one, like the scripture says, okay? So, the man of sin is adversary or adversarial to Yahweh Barakim and Yahweh Shai. So everything that they do, everything across the board is going to undermine the Heavenly Father is going to transgress His law. If the Heavenly Father says black, He's going to say white. If the Heavenly Father says this is righteous, they're going to say no, this is evil. If the Heavenly Father says this is wicked, they're going to say no, this is righteous. And if the Heavenly Father says you got to keep the commandment, they're going to tell you, oh, if you keep the commandment, the Heavenly Father is going to hate you for trying to be righteous. Trying to be righteous. Alright? But it says... Uh, what does it say? We practice the uh, uh, righteous works? Re rehearse the righteous acts. Re we rehearse the righteous acts. Yet, in, in the other cultures, you have to have to go against these righteous acts to be righteous in their culture. And, and another thing about the other religions, I've noticed that every religion has a serpent of knowledge. Hmm. That's wild. Hmm. That's fact. Yes, it is. That's wild. Yeah, you go, you go to the Hindus, you go to the, um, uh, there, there's a, a, even in the Aztecs. I mean, I would have to look it up, but a lot of these um, so-called religions, they have a serpent for knowledge. Mm -hmm. Even in ours, in the Christian Bible. And that serpent was more subtile than any other creature in the garden. So we know to stay away from the serpent of knowledge, but they embrace that serpent. Isn't that, isn't that interesting how that works? Yeah, yeah. That's wild. That's heavy. That's heavy. This is what you get from the man of sin, okay? Because, again, evils have multiplied in this world because of one nation of people. We're learning the ways of the Edomites. We got our people walking in the ways of the Edomites. Everybody wants to be an Edomite, okay? How many, how many Israelite women? I mean, it's, it's, it's the number of Israelite women walking around with blonde hair is at an all-time high. I've never seen anything like it. From celebrity to the average uh, Israelite woman, it's, it's crazy. It's incredible. Blue contact, bleach in their skin. All right, they're being systematically conditioned to hate themselves. And, and I got a precept for that in the same chapter, Ephesians chapter five, Go ahead, bro. verse six and seven. Let no man deceive you with vain words. The word vain means worthless. So let no man deceive you with his worthless words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of Yahweh upon the children of disobedience. Verse 7. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. That simple. He's telling you about these people. The scriptures are telling you at the same time to stay away from them. The scripture said, it was reinforcing when you brought out. Never trust thine enemy. Okay? 
because these, these people are inherently wicked. It's in them to be wicked. All right, they cannot be righteous. Speaking of which, you bring out uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 26, verse 10, Mother Shah. They I, can't. They're incapable of doing right. I was about to bring out a precept on that. But we'll get Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 10. And verse 10. And it reads, Let favor be shown to the wicked. Yet will he not learn righteousness? In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of Yahweh. And this is the irony of these devils, the man of sin, because here it is. They're occupying the land of uprightness, or the land of righteousness, Israel, right? Oh, no. Damn. It's one of those days, Thank people. You, Did it turn off? Nah, it's still going. Damn. Have to get you a better holder. Yeah, I'm hip. What the hell? Salakia, brothers and sisters. Salakia, Salakia, Salakia. That's all right. I got a precept on the way because how are you going to tell? How are you going to tell the, the the righteous from the wicked? Is this this is super simple too? A, a straight go-to verse for anybody. So Romans 16 and 17. This is literally if this person isn't on the same doctrine as you, if they're not learning and they're not speaking the same way, if they if they if their vibration doesn't match up with yours. Oh, this, we're having issues. If their vibration doesn't match that with yours, this is Romans 16 and 17. I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and con offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. Hey, bro, you mind if I yeah, put yeah, mine yeah, up? Yeah. Let me switch it around here. You go back over there, and I'll, I'll, I'll fix it. All right. All right, we're good. All right. I'm going to read that again. Yeah, let's go back. To the, so like I was saying, if you want to, um, and then we'll go back to what you were saying too. So and this, is just, this is just an easy way to figure out if you're dealing with the righteous person that's in the truth with you or if you are dealing with an antichrist. So let's read it again. This is Romans 16 and 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. That's very simple. So if the doctrine doesn't match up, get away from them. That simple. And what were you were at, at uh, uh, um, Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 10. And it reads, Let favor be shewed to the wicked. Yet will he not learn righteousness? In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly? And will not behold the majesty of Yahweh? And again, the irony of this is that here it is. You have this the land of uprightness in Israel, right? Then you got a nation of people occupying the land of uprightness or righteousness, but everything they do is contrary to that, right? They sell pork, pork in the stores. Oh, but it, it, oh, don't worry, it's being it's kosher now because the rabbi prayed over it. Right. <laughs> kosher pork. Kosher I mean, pork. it's just madness. If you can't tell by now who the man of sin is, something's wrong with it. If not, where and who is he? You're in denial. I mean, it's because it's too obvious. The Heavenly Father made it obvious. All right? I mean, the track record of these people is speaking for itself. You should be able to identify based on everything that they're doing and things they're not doing. They're not upholding righteousness in the land of uprightness. Okay, they're, they're having alphabet parades. 
right? You're selling poultry pork, like the brother was saying in, in, in the story, right? I mean, just all man is of wickedness and evil, and everybody turns a blind eye to it. Christians don't say anything. They don't speak about that, but they sure as hell are motivated to speak out against you Israel, you black Hebrew Israelites, right? And I'm being sarcastic when I say that, because we're not black. Black okay. means to be evil or destitute of life. That's why they call us black. They're saying we're evil and we're destitute of life. We're pretty much fucking stupid and we don't know anything. They call themselves white because that means righteousness. To be set apart. To be with over here, over here with the house officer now outside. But we're over there, you know, we're black, we're in the dark. We were Satan. Yeah. Right. That's why when you watch um, old movies and they depict Satan like, uh, oh man, what was it called? They got the black dude. Um, 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 the one movie uh, where he has the metal bird. Um, Curse gets you at the bucket. Wild woman, oh, you talking about a uh, Titan? Titan. Class of the Titan. Class of the Titan. Class of the Titan. Watch that movie and tell me, doesn't say it looks like the whole RB singer with books? <laughs> 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 you know what I'm telling the truth too. That's what's messed up. And as a child, when I was a little kid watching, I'm like, man, all, all the devils are black, and all the good people are white. And I didn't know any better, but they were building a, they were painting a picture for my future. They were programming. Mm. Okay, this is called that. That's what they call social engineering. Okay, and it's, it's, it starts in elementary. It starts from the womb. Okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but. It starts when you are you enter their schools of indoctrination. That's when it starts. Okay, you are pre-programmed to look at yourself as evil, wicked, stupid, dumb, right? And you're programmed to look at them as righteous, intelligent, okay, smart. You're you're encouraged to sympathize with their plight. Okay, whenever they have losses, whenever they're hurting, whenever they're victims of anything, you're conditioned, you're pre-programmed. To sympathize with them. Yeah, they'll fucking kill you. And you'll be like, you know, God says to forgive you every time. You know, Perfect example. Forgive you. Forgive you. Perfect example. You just kill me. I'll tell you what. Fucking show up like that on me and see if I don't kill you back. And I, I, I'm example. sorry, but if you're going to take my family out and expect me to uh, forgive you, I, I hate you with a perfect hatred. Just like David. Just like King David said, I hate them, Father, they hate you with a perfect hatred. If you're out trying to do stuff to me, that means you hate your Alabama and your Alabama, because I've only been sitting here in righteousness like my brother over here. Uh -huh. And all of the rest of the family of TMS that's in 100% truth, whether you're in a camp or you're an affiliate. Uh -huh. well, this has been a great time. All the thunder, the lightning, the rain even got tired and went away. <laughs> We're in Isaiah 26 and uh, 10 is where we stop. Can we go to what? Oh, I need to finish. Will we not behold the majesty of the Lord? And you know, that's pretty much self explanatory. And the Esau Edom has shown that he's not going to behold the majesty of the Lord to be scripture. Okay? He's not going to do that. Brother's looking up the word majesty. I'm looking for it. It means mightier than everything else. Superlative. And so majestic is a superlative meaning. Mightier, mightier than everything else. So if everything is... is Majest or majestic is mightier than everything else, doesn't that give you cause to fear it? See, and that's why these devils don't fear your how about you, how shot. Okay, and this is why they do what they do. See, we fear the Lord. We're trying to walk in his way. We're trying to follow his law. I, 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 I have a um, I think I have a precept for majesty. This, this is this is important. It's imperative that you understand this being in this walk. Okay? You look at what these devils are doing out there, and you look at what we're doing. We fear the Lord. This is why we come out here week in and week out, me and the brother here, and the brothers the GMS, and the brothers, you know, the affiliate camps. We're all doing this because we fear the Lord. 
We want his righteousness to be established on this earth. Go ahead, bro. This is uh, Psalms 104 and 1. Blessed the, bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord Yahweh, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. So above and exceeding, every, your, your clothing is more power. So he's saying you're clothed in this power that exceeds everything else. And I just thought, man, that's beautiful. That is. That. that is. So and again, that's all the more reason to fear it. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you got to understand what power you're dealing with here. Okay? This is the creator of the universe. All right? This is the giver of life. All right? He's responsible for death. So it, It's funny because they actually, the next verse, it kind of goes into an explanation of the most high, too. So he, he's, he's going, he's like, he's literally, that was beautiful because this is verse 2. Who coverest thyself with light. As with a garment who stretches stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chamber in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angel spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. And you know what? That last part is so beautiful. It is. Because we're ministering right now. The clouds, the, the rain, the storm. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. That flaming fire is having, um, I would say, a, um, th that, that desire to bring out this righteous truth. That's the flaming fire we're in right now. Huh? Beautifully said. Well put. Beautifully said that. You know, it's just it's a beautiful thing to be involved in this. You know, I mean, there's a great reward. You know, and I do remind myself of that, that at some point, this is going to be over. We're not going to be out here on the highways and hedges. We're going to be on this earth in the kingdom of heaven, all right, reminiscing about being out here doing what we did, okay? Because we're doing this for the heavenly Father. I mean, number one, we were chosen to do it. Is that wrong? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, me go. Oh, he keeps keep his eye on it. Uh, yeah. You got something more? Um, that was, I, I did, but it kind of went away. I was going to bring out, actually, I was going to, because you said that we're going to be taken up into the clouds and we're going to be on the earth, but we're going to be in the kingdom. So, I mean, I was looking for, it actually says that, that um, this, this life would be a memory, but I couldn't find it. It'll be like a, a memory. And I'll give go to Revelation 11 and 12, but I mean, that's just really telling how we're going to be taken up into the clouds. So I didn't bring it out because it's just telling us that that's actually going to happen. But what I really, there's, there's a scripture that I can't remember um, how to paraphrase it even because I get it up on Google. And it literally says that this life would be like a, like a memory in a dream. I know it's talking about a camera. All this stuff will be the damn. The, the, the first Exodus will be be forgotten. How great our Exodus is going to be this time, and you can see it right now. It's already building up. You guys got to be crazy to not see the prophecies unfold. Or man, that's a serious life. You're out there trying to do your next TikTok video, and, uh, and the fucking sky is falling. <laughs> And that, that separates us from the Christian. I mean, not only that, but can we get a Sirach chapter 39? Because verse 1, of the shock. Sirach, which is also known as Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, and starting from the top. But he that giveth his mind to the law of Yahweh and is occupied in the meditation thereof, will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecy. You. And see, and that's exactly the mindset of the elect. Okay? The prophets and the teachers of the Heavenly Father out here. We are preoccupied with prophecy. We meditate on prophecy. Okay? We are matching up everything that we see out here in the world to the scriptures. Okay, it lets us know where we are in time. All right, it lets us know that our Lord and our Savior is on his way. It lets us know how close he is. 
Okay, because you wouldn't, otherwise you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know, you wouldn't be able to redeem the times. Okay, you have to have your mind immersed or enmeshed in prophecy. Okay, and I'll take it a step further. You have to understand who these prophecies are about. Okay, because again, it's not talking, it's not talking about everybody. This spiritual awakening isn't for everybody. It's for the, is, the elect of the nation of Israel. And that's beautiful. You got to know what these prophecies are talking about. Because I'm gonna, if I go to the book of Obadiah, it ain't talking about us. <laughs> but, so, so you got to understand, there's a context. These prophecies are for everybody. There are certain ones for us. And then there's certain ones for you. So we don't want to cross that. We want to make sure that you guys receive your reward correctly as we receive ours. Speaking of which, uh, we get the book of the editions of Esther, chapter 10, verse 10. Because, like the brother was just saying, there's two lots. Okay? We don't share the same prophecies. Okay? Now, the wicked two-thirds Israelites are going to share the same <laughs> prophecies of the same judgment as the heathens. Okay? But there's an expiration date to theirs. Yes. Okay? Because they're going to be reborn in the kingdom of heaven to everlasting life. This is the book of additions to Esther. Chapter 10. Going to verse 10. Therefore he hath he has he made to us. Can you, can okay. you start at verse 9, Mother Okay. Verse 8. I, I'm going to ask for this. This is addition to Esther, chapter 10, starting at verse 8. And the nations were those that were assembled of Salakia. And the nations were those that were assembled to destroy the name of the Jews. And my nation is this, Israel, which cried to Yahweh and were saved. For Yahweh hath saved his people, and Yahweh hath delivered us from all those evils. And Yahweh hath wrought signs and great wonders, which have not been done among the Gentiles. You heard that. There's two lots. Okay, we're not going to share the same lot as a nation. Okay? The nation, or the heathen nations, compared to the, uh, the Israelites. All right? Our lot is going to be salvation. Okay? Now, with the two-thirds, like I said, they're going to rock the judgment of the heavenly Father. Right? But ultimately, they're going to be reborn into the kingdom of heaven of utter righteousness. The heathens, on the other hand, not only are they going to be destroyed on this side of judgment, but then when, well, the ones here in Babylon are ready to be destroyed, the ones dispersed throughout the rest of the uh, world, the ones that survive are going to go into slavery. Okay? And then the heathens that are reborn into the world or the kingdom of heaven, Salakia, are going into slavery. Okay? For a period of a thousand years. And that's how they're going to get their judgment. You know what's really cool about this verse? It separates the Gentiles in context. Mm -hmm. Because we're also known as Gentiles. Mm -hmm. You guys know that. And it says right here, one for the people of Yahweh, that's us, the chosen ones, the hidden ones, the peculiar people, the children of Yashar Allah. But wait, and another for the Gentiles, showing you that there's a natural Gentile and there's a spiritual Gentile. So that's in context. So just a little side note for you guys. Sorry, a little... Uh, uh, a little ammo for the weapon. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So now, like his brother was saying, there's a distinction between the Gentiles. Alright? The natural Gentiles and the spiritual Gentiles. Alright? We being the latter. Okay? Because we were scattered to all nations under heaven, pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy. Okay? Like the scripture says, in past times, ye were Gentiles. Well, you, as a Gentile, as a heathen, you can't uh, erase your Gentile status. You can't change that. Right? Once an Edomite, always an Edomite. Once a, once a, a Moabite, always a Moabite. Okay? Point blank, period. That's just the way it is. 
Ver verse 12. So Yahweh remembered his people and justified his inheritance. That's beautiful. That, that, that just destroys Gentiles again. All you natural Gentiles, you, you're, you're doomed. You can't, you can't become a spiritual Gentile. That just means that we were citizens of a country, and for the most part, we didn't know our um, true heritage. You guys belong to wherever you're from. You were never given the law. That's why you can't break the law. That's why the world's given to the hands of the wicked, and they always seem to be getting better and better at what they're doing, but it's because this is their kingdom right now. My mind. But, like it's the most fun. That's all I had when I was, I was starting. Mm -hmm. Nope. But it looked like they were happy to see the work coming out. Maybe they passed by the court. Okay. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring out uh, Ecclesiasticus 39 once again. Very important to understand this. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof, will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient wisdom of our forefathers. Okay, they brought out, we're bringing out the same thing that they were bringing out. Okay? And be occupied in the prophecy, just like our forefathers were occupied in the prophecy. Okay? It's so important to understand where you are in time. Okay, because again, you got to be able to redeem the time. Look at these prophecies. Look at what's unfolding. Look at what's taking place. All right? How close are we to the mark of the beast? Very close. All right? There's talk of a new pestilence that's going to be released real soon. Okay? Well, the scriptures talk about pestilence. There's talk of famine, an engineered or manufactured famine. Right? Well, the scriptures, the Heavenly Father says there's going to be famine in the end times. And it doesn't matter whether it's engineered or manufactured. It's still fulfilling prophecy. Oh, right, right. It doesn't matter because ultimately, who is engineering these famines? It's that Yahweh the outside. He's putting it on these devils. He's putting it on their spirit to, uh, to do it, to facilitate it. Okay? So, this is the heavenly father's movie. Satan isn't down here running the muck, controlling anything. He don't he got no Running under the authority of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashi, Yahweh Shai. Let's confirm that real quick. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. See now that I, even I, am He, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. I did Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That, that, that's confirmation right there. That's the Heavenly Father. He is he's pulling the strings. He's pulling the proverbial strings of mankind down here. Okay? Righteous Israelites and the wicked Edomites and the wicked two-thirds. This is the Heavenly Father's story, and it's going to play out exactly the way he wanted. He says it's going to play out. Okay? Nothing is going to deviate from his script. Not one thing. Okay? So all you knucklehead Israelites that seem to think that you're, you're, um, you have free will, because I've heard that many, many times. Free will. Especially you dumbass Christians. All right? We have free will. No, you don't have free will. All right? This story is going to play out exactly to the letter of the script. All right? No deviations will take place. You got anything else, Um, because you said they have their own will, I might as well get that. They, they don't have their own will. That is a lie. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, man, I know I, I'm just out of watch. Man, going to the Lord? Uh, no. Uh, the heart is in the king of the king. In a dream and the vision of the night. Oh. Jeremiah chapter... Yeah, I, was going, I was going 15 I to 30. Jeremiah. That's why. I said Jeremiah. No. Yeah, so Job, because he was saying, um, you, you were saying that, that, that the Christians think that they have free will. And most people do. Even some of these Israelites, they don't realize 
that they can't just do whatever they want. The Most High is going to instruct you what you're, he's going to tell you what you're going to do, whether you like it or not. Let's confirm that. This is Job 33 and 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men and the slumbers upon the bed. Let's go to the whole chapter. Um, when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumberings on the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sills their instructions. Straight up, you have no free will. Your instructions are sealed when you go to sleep at night. So when you thought that you were going to go to the races, but then all of a sudden you got a flat tire, and then you ended up having a fixed tire, and then after that somebody else called you, you ended up having to go over here, go over there, you got this other emergency. By the end of the day, like, damn, all I wanted to do was go to the races. What happened? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have control. You think you have control. Mm -hmm. You're a fool. Well, that's, that's the pride of man. Okay? You learned that from Esau. Okay? He tells you you have free will. Okay? Because he, he wants to feel like he's in control of everything. You don't have no goddamn free will. You are subject to the whims of your how about you how child. And I want to get Proverbs chapter 21. Oh, wait, bro. Uh, Proverbs 1. Proverbs uh, 21 chapter. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 21 KJV. Proverbs chapter 21 KJV. And then of course they hide it. Proverbs chapter 21. KJV, starting from the top. The king's part is in the hand of Yahweh, as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. And the king's part, part, Hebrew is law. Okay, the word in Hebrew is law. It means the mind. Okay, so the heavenly father has the minds of men in his hand. Okay, when it says he's turning it whithersoever he will, he's manipulating minds. He's telling you what you're going to do, like the brother just brought out. He's sealing your instructions for the day when you sleep. Okay, so if it's your destiny to walk in front of a, 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 a train and get hit, well, guess what? The Heavenly Father programmed that into your psyche when you were sleeping. He said, tomorrow you're going to go out and run in front of a train. Yeah. You know, not necessarily because you, even, of course, suicide. But let's say if you inadvertently get hit, well, guess what? If you happen to be walking down Broadway and you, you're supposed to cross the street at 3 or 12 after 3, and you happen to get hit by a sun tram bus, guess what? The Heavenly Father put it in the instructions in your mind to be at that exact spot and location so you can meet your doom. You know what the prophets would say in ancient times? If they saw you got hit by something and died right in front of them, like, did he sin or did his parents? <laughs> Not with the parents part, but they would want to know what his sin was. Was his sin in this life or in a life before this? You don't know how old this guy was. I mean, he seemed to live the perfect life. He didn't do anything wrong, but then he gets totally obliviated by a bus. You got to, so the, the, the real prophets and the ancients, would, the first thing they would think is what was his sin? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, even us, and now that I've been in this truth, when I hear people meeting, you know, uh, horrible things like that, I ask myself, oh man, I wonder what he did in his previous life or this life, okay? And nonetheless, it's a judgment. Or if you see somebody that's like, I don't, for the lack of better terms, I'm going to use the word retarded, but um, or, or slow. Yeah, exactly. But I used to be think that was cute and funny until I woke up to the truth. Now when I see a person like that, I get scared. Yeah. I tell my kids, do not talk about that person. Yeah. Don't make no jokes. Yeah. That person got judged yeah. specifically, yeah. and so stay away from that judgment. Don't sit there and make jokes about it. It could be you next. Be one of your kids. So that's where that's where righteousness and meekness comes in too. Yeah. It's it's like it's funny sometimes to make a little you my joke here and there, but honestly, I don't take time to do that. I don't care. I don't have enough breath in me to worry about making up a, 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 a cute little statement to make everybody laugh. I'd rather just tell them their demise so we can laugh about that at the end. But we should never, ever. And this is just a side note. You see somebody that's cursed like that, leave them alone. You don't make fun of them. Mm. I don't. I, don't. I, don't. I tell my kids not to. Same I take that thing. very seriously. You know, I do take that seriously as well, man. You know, 
I mean, even if it's a heat, it's like, hey, well, he's getting judged, you know, but still, don't make fun of him, don't laugh at him. You, you, know? you should feel some kind of way because that judgment was real. You should literally, if you study these scriptures and you know what the book says, there's judgments out there that are coming for you guys right now. You're being sifted right now. You should be scared. But you know what they are? They're out TikToking. You see that girl walk past right now, drenched, drenched. She didn't care. She thought it was cute. That's all. That's what this world is. They think everything's a fucking TikTok video and everything's got to be cute and entertaining. It's not going to happen, though. The entertainment is going to be when you see us pull up into the cloud and then the real destruction happens. That's going to be the show. That's going to be our entertainment then. So we're going to have front row seats to the destruction, to the judgment of you devils, the rest of you heathens, and you wicked two-third Israelites. And we're going to see it in great fear and give glory to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So we're not going to be out there, yeah, they're going to find Oh, yeah. shit. Do you see what's happening? Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord, for letting me well, not be down there with them. Well, thank well, you. See, that's going to be a lot of But, but, but there, there will be. I mean, it, it tells Christ, that we're going to be in fear. The, the, but it also says that, that, won't be. that that's we, we, will be, we will be laughing at their calamity, like it says in Proverbs. Because the Heavenly Father is going to be laughing. He's going to be laughing to his prophets. When, well, I'm thinking of... Uh, Revelation 11 and 12 and 13. It literally says that we give glory to God in great fear because that's the moment. Well, of course. That's at that moment. Of so I'm, I'm going to, And then, you know, I can't say how it's going to work after that, but he's right. We are going to laugh at your calamity. We do that right now. Yeah, we're, we're going to laugh at the command. We see these people getting judged. When I see the people who wrong me getting judged, huh. I'm going to laugh. And I, I promise you that, okay? There won't be any sympathizing with anybody, any evildoers. You remember when those Edomites tried to start a fight with that boat captain? And we never even seen a black guy swimming. He swam across the lake. Yeah. And then when he got out of the water, he turned out to be a teenager. And he beat the bricks off of everybody. Yeah. Uh, even the white dude got on uh, social media and said, we're in that old black man can fight good. His whole face looked like he got beat with a bass. <laughs> and yes, we laughed at that. Yeah. We, we mean, they, people, but people were tying chairs to the top of their cars. I mean, they were taking it overboard. Yeah. But um, we do laugh at the calamity of the Edomites and other nations when, when, when we get that opportunity. This isn't our rest. Time. Time. So there's going to be a time when you guys are going to wish you didn't see our faces ever again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. And then to make the eye contact. You didn't make an eye contact over here. You got that right. <laughs> you got that right. Oh, I can't wait, bro. I can't <laughs> wait. You won't be doing that. In I fact, they won't, they won't have the spirit in them to look at our face. No, no. So you'd never have to worry about something like that. It would be a face in the ground. I don't even want to look at his shoes. Mm -hmm. You'd be like this with your head turned. Uh -huh. not you're going to have your head turned, your hands out to show that you're, you're, you're at complete submission. Mm -hmm. This is complete submission. That's how you're going to be walking up to us. Yep. Yep. This, this, is, this, this is over. Uh -huh. The elders are tired. It's all over. We're just going through the motions now, waiting. Sir. I mean, I'm literally in the waiting room. I got my ticket. This is my ticket out of here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to leave. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to leave. Uh, I, I, I mean, I can't wait to leave. I, 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 I can't wait. And, and Gabar Dama, man, man, I really liked that guy when I was listening to him. I didn't know he was in the background doing shit. And that, that's what, that, and the, and what it does, what you did, is you made all Israel look over to the person next to him and wonder what they're doing. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate, man. Because really I like the brother too. You know, he used to go by the name uh, Like Mind. You know, when I first came into the truth, and I used to watch some videos. He used to be out there in the highway and heading with another brother. You know, I watched some of his videos and whatnot. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, damn, who can you trust? Well, you can trust the brothers that are walking in the, in the way that you have seen how it shot. And uh, that, that's the problem right there. See, he was coming with the perfect doctor. He's got the garment. He's got the all poster. He's saying all the right things. And, and this is where it says you have to be circumspect. There's nothing that is hidden that won't be brought to the light. And honestly, I had a little lump in my throat for the bar of Dharma too. That's the last, I, that's the last thing I want to see is another GMS person fall off. Thank you. That breaks my heart. Yeah, it like does. So just know that, Gabar. You made us real sad over here. We were hoping for you to be a right yeah. And I know that I know that uh, 
Menachas out by the rest of North Carolina felt the same way because, man, they were pissed. They were really taken back by it because you're putting them on a, a group chat and everything, and he, he thinks that everything's all good. And there's a justification of your own mindset. You justify and you thought that, oh, well, it's okay. It's never okay. They trusted this brother, man. They trusted you, man. This you know, you betrayed their trust. Not, not only that, but how about you now? Mm. I mean, here it is. Heavenly Father wakes you up, puts you in this truth. You know, this is this is the best position to be in in the universe. Mm. Okay? I mean, having this lot, being called to do what we're doing, you know, I mean, there are days where you're like, ah, oh, man, I, I don't feel like you, you, you just muster the energy, the spirit, to get out here and do it because this is a blessing, man. This is a privilege. This is an honor and this is a privilege to be able to do what we're doing. Not only have this knowledge and this truth, but to be able to teach it. Okay? So you're given this beautiful gift to, to be able to teach our people, and this is what you do? Man. You know what? This is why we don't have a GMS Tucson camp. Because the GMS leader that came down here was taking money. Mm -hmm. Was taking money, and nobody knows where it went. Mm -hmm. And so now he got kicked out of the, the people came down. I, the, the, we never even met the, the other camp members before because we're not in GMS. We were just studying with GMS, hoping to cross that line one day, and all this fucking bullshit goes down. LA, the LA camp comes down, the guy, the, uh, what's his name, who saw, who had the uh, Angel on a show up, they were here, and the whole Phoenix camp came down. There was like 30 people here. There was like 30 people. Gabara, Don. And you know what? Now, because of that, we got sent home. We didn't even get to be a part of the meetings because we're not in the camp. But when, when the next day rolled around, there was no camp. But that's what you do. When you go around being destructive in your heart, in your mind, you destroy everything. There's a ripple effect. So now we, we, we're just alone again. There's no GMS coming down here. There's no one getting our backs like that anymore. And we were, we were sincere. We didn't do anything wrong. It was the leader who was taken from us. And now we're we got we got cast out. Not GMS didn't cast us out like that. We're still allowed to study with them, but honestly, there will, there will probably never be a Tucson camp though. That's why we just put Tucson camp. It was GMS Tucson camp, but that's been done away with. So it's people like wicked people that will have the, what is it? You can't love one and you would it. Man cannot love man and God. You can't love money and love your house. That's all there is to it. You're always going to cleave back to the money because that's taking care of me. Well, you know what? Money doesn't take care of me. I've been making a, I've been making the, for the last 10, 20 years, I've been making at least $25 an hour. But I couldn't even get a place to live at, that, at those wages. But when I started following the instruction, when I start following the truth and keeping Yahweh's laws, all of a sudden it's like I'm a rich person. I have a house now. I wasn't. I'm not. I'm not homeless anymore. I was fucking homeless. So when I see people stealing from other people, it hits me a little bit different because I didn't have anything and I would refuse to take anything from anybody. That's all I have, man. I'm, I'm just starting to go. And I, I feel this just because of Gabar Adam. I really like that guy, and it just makes me sad to see another brother be taken out by Satan's device. Yeah. Yeah. Brother fell, man. Another brother, but you know, it's it's it's, it's uh, I'm trying to say, it's the heavenly father. That's that's their role. It's they part of that brother the, army, you know. So unfortunately, they're being sifted. And they're being sifted out. That's what I'm yeah. Okay. So sifted out, and that's due to the, the will of the heavenly father. Okay. He searched his heart and saw it was wicked. Got him out of there. Okay, because you want to be found with no God. Our, our king is coming. The house shot is on this way. Mm. Okay, so the Heavenly Father is saying everybody that doesn't need to be, like that's not supposed to be in this, this body here, is getting sifted out. Okay? So this is the time to reflect. Self-reflect. Self-examine yourself. Because, you know, hey man. Oop, here it comes. It's that time. That time is coming, man. We're at that time. So that's all I got, bro. Uh, I, all I want to hear is the most I strike it. There it is.
That's all I was waiting for right there. Oh, hello, you how about a city how shot? I think he had the last part of that message. <laughs> so um, if there's nothing else to be said here, we want to we want to end this the same way we started it. We want to give double honors to the elders who rule well. Starting with Elder Apostle Tahar, Elder Apostle Tabar, Elder Apostle Uriah Law, and so on and so forth, going down the chain of command. They've been bringing out the same truth for the last 30 plus years. Now, all the people, all these camps that call themselves One West, had to learn from Tahar. Nobody's as old as, oh wait, uh, Yohanna. Yohanna, you know what's funny about that name, Yohanna? My name is Johan. My cousin, her name, she, her name is Johanna. You know why? Because Johan means John, and Johanna means Joanna. It's a fucking girl's name. Sorry, in, in, in German. Maybe in Hebrew it means something else. But in German, it's literally Joanna. And I always thought that was funny. This dude's name is Joanna. And everybody loves him. <laughs> no. it's a, so it's a feminine name for me because of my, my cousin who I grew up with since childhood. I was Johanna to a Johanna. So you could tell there was a close connection between us. Mm -hmm. But anyway, all of you wicked camp leaders, except for Johan, I think that he was there at the same time or maybe a little bit before Tahar. All of you had to learn from Tahar. So you were of him but not from him. And when you went out to the world, you chose wickedness. So we're going to give double honors to the elder apostles that rule well, like I said, that didn't wave it to the left and to the right. Because 30 years is a long time to not take a bag, Nathaniel. What? Well, it in the 20. Who cares? You've had a camp for 20. Who cares? You were also a detective, and the New York Police Department probably, probably started your camp for you. I mean, probably figure that out real quick and easy, too. But let's go ahead and just uh, end there. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rukwaka Gosh. And double honors, like I said, to those elder apostles who rule well. And if you uh, have eyes to see and ears to hear, I hope you got something out of this message. Shalom. Beautiful lesson. Beautiful lesson.